Hello everyone, my name is Professor Pui and I will be your dungeon master for this video. In today's video, we'll be covering DM tips for Tailspire. Now if you like what you see here and would like to see more, consider hitting that subscribe button and we'll get on to the next one. So before we start with Tailspire, I should really give an overview of what Tailspire is for those who don't really know what Tailspire is about. Tailspire is a kickstarted digital tabletop game made in Unity by Bouncy Rock Entertainment. Tailspire is like Roll20, although 3D, and you don't need a subscription to use it, you just need to buy it once for $20, and you have access to the full game. At the moment, the game is still in beta, so you would need to wait for its early access release coming in the next few months. The devs are tirelessly working at this project and are working to just make this game as release as soon as possible. The game is still in beta, so many of the features I may be showing here may be subject to change or improvement as the devs keep working and hammering on making this game a lot better. So how can you play with Tailspire? Well, at the moment you can't really play Tailspire unless you support it or back the project before it closed its uh, uh, backers uh, pledges. But what you can do is wishlist the game on Steam. It has a Steam page, you can look at all the features and keep in touch with the developers. They even have their own Discord where the community is very active and they keep posting updates to the game. Right, so DMing tip number one. Try out building small uh, slabs or small uh, environments where your players would interact or move around. Um, have them separate on their own board, so that way you can just call them up when you need them, or uh, have them spaced out enough that they don't have to articulate between them. Articulate? I don't know why I use that word. Oh. I am sorry, I'm being attacked by my own body. <sighs> Help me. So you can start by building a tavern, you know, the first location where most adventures start where most adventurers get together to have a drink and chuck down their nightmares. Now when it comes to building maps, the best way to start is by where your players are going and where the direction of your campaign is going. Now for most of you, you've been building maps for the longest time. Um, but getting into a new program is always going to be a bit of a hassle. Uh, to learn the ropes and get accustomed to how the program runs. So yes, players will explore. So, keeping that in mind, you wouldn't want to have the world be open unless that's what you're going for and you're gonna spend the whole week building out a whole map. Building in this game is a bit tedious as you need to select piece by piece, uh, organize them. You can't select and move, you have to select cut and move. Uh, so there's this three step program instead of a two step. Uh, so you need to effectively get accustomed to building. So I suggest building small encounters or small locations where the players could effectively be nestled together and move about in that location. Aside from that, you could use templates or player build templates. There's this amazing website uh, called Tales Bazaar where you can effectively search for anything that could suit your needs. Now depending on how high detailed you're going to be, you might not want to use these tiles, but then again, most of these templates were made by players, so they are of good quality. All you have to do is copy the slab and paste it onto your Tailspire board. It'll copy paste it immaculately. It won't have NPCs because you can't have NPCs in the slabs, but you can just drag and drop them in. Uh, you don't have to build your whole world map. All you need to build is where your players are going to be walking around and interacting. 
and you don't have to have every board available you just need the boards available that will eventually might come into play all right so i suggest having at least one board um, fully complete and have the, the other ones um, that aren't finished work in progress not have the players interact with it maybe end the session a little sooner or delay up to you on how do you deal with it but we're all dungeon masters we all build dungeons for a living so you guys will come up with a solution also the one thing you can do and i suggest is building reusable uh, boards uh, where on your campaign where players usually go back to certain locations like cities or taverns or certain locations where your players will be coming back to like a guild hall um, you can use those boards reuse them just reorganize the characters um, review your notes and just reuse the board it's a ready-made map and the players can just explore you can keep expanding the board to ludicrous uh, distances it's just that when when you start loading in that board it might take you a couple of minutes if you fill the board up to the brim I suggest keeping the boards small and not over stack them with a lot of information uh, that way you don't have to wait for the board to completely load and if someone has to reload that board that'll take them a couple of minutes just to load it in one of the things I suggest for building dungeons is to hide your certain segments. Now the Dungeon Master has one of the tools which is the hide feature. You can hide a whole board uh, from the players and only have the starting uh, area for them. And as they explore, you just unhide those slabs as they uncover the map as you would. You know, if you do it if you're doing this uh, on real life, you usually have like a piece of paper on top of the whole board. And once they reach the location, you effectively flip the paper over and reveal the map below. Same thing, although you just draw a bounding box and anything inside is hidden, uh, including NPCs and uh, including NPC tokens and the map itself. So it's great to have uh, that for the players. They don't know what they'll be coming up to next until they actually explore and emphasizing the exploration for these players and giving them a lot more to do other than just walking between a certain path where they know there's a lot more over here than to explore down here. Another tip is to use the cutscenes to invoke much more cinematic feel. Um, you're introducing a very important NPC, the BEG, a very important character, or a performance even where you just lock the players in a camera position. Uh, they'll be looking at the stage or stage play if you want to go that far. And the DM still has control over everything. The players can't move or interact their pieces as they're locked in a cutscene. So it's best to use this to effectively make something cinematic. Make it more interesting. You can still move their pieces just because the player can no longer move theirs as their control for the moment is suspended. So for all those solo DMs out there who effectively bought Tailspire but couldn't convince one of their friends to actually join and want to use the game, there is a solution, although well, very hacky one. You can have two instances of the same game running on your platform, one being the Dungeon Master screen, the other one being the player screen. In order to run two separate instances of Tailspire, well, you need to launch the game first, have it running uh, here on the, your computer, and then you would need to go to your uh, Steam apps, common Tailspire, find the Tailspire app, right click it, and run as administrator. And just like that, we have two instances of Tailspire running. I'm gonna join the same game and you'll see that I have effectively two screens. There I can see <laughs> my second instance of myself down here and here's the same game. Great thing about this is you can change into the player. Now I only control the player piece and you can see it over here that it gets reflected 
And now we can play around here. So this is the perfect way for you to be able to have the player screen and have only the player piece uh, be the movable piece. And you as a dungeon master can uh, move the enemy piece while the players can't even, you know, touch them since that is not their playing piece. You can move the camera, zoom in, and look at the enemy pieces, but you cannot interact with them. And so when the player uh, moves out of sight, per se, the enemies they can't see will become hidden because every piece has a line of sight. So once they start getting into line of sight, they'll be able to see them. Uh, and so this is the best uh, way for you to effectively screen share the game, the player uh, screen, so your players can actually see the game running. Like I said, uh, this is very hacky and it may not work or it may work. Um, I had some issues trying to run it right now. And the best way to make it run is to make sure Steam is either running or if it starts giving you errors, just start uh, closing Steam, uh, closing the bootleg, going to Task Manager and uh, closing Steam and running the game as administrator to force it to create a second instance of the same game while detecting the new one as uh, the Steam game while they're both connected to the server great thing about it is it runs and there is bugs of course but it is very functional as you can effectively control the players with your player screen and control the environment change uh, make something hidden uh, hide things uh, summon more NPCs use the cutscenes and use everything as the players are only viewing what you want them to see makes it a lot better for the player experience as they don't have to see all of your dungeon master tools they don't have to see what tab they're in they don't have to see you spawning in npcs and the likes so it is very good to use it so yeah guys so those are the dm tips i have for tailspire if you have any more tips that you would like to share you can leave them in the comments if you have any more questions I can answer them in the comments or make another video following up this video. If you like what you see here, would like to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so we can talk more about Tailspire and D&D. Until then guys, Professor Pui out. Class is dismissed.